Hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. If you're looking for a new and unique way to prepare your turkey this year, you've got to check this out. We'll be making my lemon and herb spatchcock turkey. And this method of preparing turkey really cuts down on the roasting time and yields a super juicy and delicious turkey every single time. Plus it's super easy to do. We'll start by preparing a roasting pan with tons of aromatics like garlic, onion, carrots, and then I'm going to show you how to spatchcock the turkey. It's a simple method of cutting it down the middle and then spreading it flat which really cuts down on the cooking time. We're going to coat that and season it with a lemon and herb mayo spread that gives this turkey so much incredible flavor. And then into the oven to let the turkey roast away. At the end, I'm gonna show you how to make a pan dripping turkey gravy that's going to rock your Thanksgiving dinner. For the full list of ingredients and the printable instructions, don't forget to head on down into that video description box and over to my website and have all the details online for you. Meanwhile, let me show you how to make this incredible turkey recipe. For today's recipe, instead of using a traditional turkey roasting pan, I'm going to be using this larger, deeper baking sheet with a wire rack on the inside. And this is going to be perfect because it'll fit the turkey, the aromatics, and all the juices without overflowing. Before adding our turkey on the top, I'm going to fill up my roasting pan with some oranges, lemons, carrots, onions, celery. I also have some garlic and apples. You want to lay everything nice and flat so we could place that wire rack over the top. Also add some fresh thyme and rosemary. And then lay that wire rack over the top and pour in two cups of chicken broth. At this time, we also want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and with our roasting pan ready to go, we can get started on the turkey. So I've taken this out of the packaging, rinsed it, patted it dry, and for this method of preparation, we're going to need some kitchen shears and a sharp chef's knife. Start by turning your turkey over with the breast side facing down into your cutting board, and then we'll grab our sharp knife. I'm gonna find the backbone, and we're going to slice the turkey on both sides of the backbone all the way down. And once you've started to cut into the bones, you use some kitchen shears to slice through the rest of it. Just makes this process a little bit easier. Once you've cut out the backbone, grab your knife and then make cuts along these bones here. This will help us lay the turkey flat. Turn that turkey back over. And you're going to apply pressure in the middle to flatten it out completely. Instead of tossing this backbone out, I like to put it into the bottom of the pan along with our aromatics. And this way we have an even more delicious broth. My husband also loves turkey neck, so I'm going to roast that along with the turkey today. Place our spatchcocked turkey right on top of our pan. Next, let's make our lemon garlic mayo spread. We'll need one cup of mayonnaise, and I really like to use avocado oil mayo. I just really like the flavor of it. Drop that into a large mixing bowl, and we'll add the zest of three large lemons. This is going to add lots of incredible flavor to our turkey. And I'll squeeze in a couple tablespoons of lemon juice. Next, I'll add in one and a half tablespoons of sea salt, two teaspoons of dried onion, two teaspoons of dried garlic, two teaspoons of dried basil, two teaspoons of dried oregano, about a tablespoon and a half of fresh thyme, and some ground black pepper. And then we'll mix this all together. Next, 
This spread is so incredibly aromatic, it's going to make our turkey so delicious. Now you might be asking, why the mayo instead of a butter or oil? I personally have been using mayo for my chicken marinade recipes for years and years, and I thought, why not apply it to turkey as well? It's the perfect vehicle for adding those spices and herbs, and it's super easy to apply. It doesn't solidify like butter does, so it's easier to work with as well, and it just makes the meat so tender and delicious. You can make this recipe with one cup of unsalted softened butter, but the mayo also works really well here. Let's get this applied to the turkey. Before you apply this spread, you wanna separate the turkey skin from the turkey breast. So just slide your hand underneath and gently separate it. Make sure you do this gently so you're not causing any tears in the skin. This way we could get that seasoning underneath the skin as well. Just makes the turkey breast extra juicy and flavorful. We'll turn the turkey over and apply that spread on this inside first. You can just use your hands or a spatula to really rub it in. And if you have the time, you can actually prepare the turkey the day before, get it all seasoned and marinated, and then set it back into the refrigerator and just let it sit there overnight for a good 24 hours to really allow these seasonings to sink in. You're gonna have the best turkey of your life. You're gonna love it. Let's turn it back over. And we'll apply the rest of the seasoning over the top. And you also wanna get some of that seasoning underneath the skin. Make sure to spread it there on the inside. And I like to use a little spatula, it just really helps it spread in there really nicely. And this incredible turkey is ready for the oven. We're going to roast it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until it reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to take two readings with a digital thermometer, one in the breast and then one in the leg, just to make sure that it's properly cooked. The roasting time for your turkey will completely depend on the size or the weight of your bird. So mine is 10 and a half pounds. It's gonna take about two hours, maybe plus minus 10 minutes. If you have a smaller turkey, it might take about an hour and a half. If you have a larger one, it might take two and a half to three hours if you have a super, super large turkey. So make sure to use a digital thermometer. Check your uh, meat temperature once it's nearing that completion time to make sure that it doesn't get overcooked. And as you're roasting, if the turkey starts to get too dark, you could just lay a sheet of foil over the top to prevent it from browning further. Once it's done roasting, take it out, let it, ro let, let it rest for about 30 minutes. Then we're going to make that pan drippings turkey gravy. It's so delicious and always a huge hit with everybody. All right, and our turkey is done roasting. It smells so good when it's in the oven. I'm going to carefully transfer it from the pan onto a large serving platter, which we can then decorate and garnish. I'm gonna slide a couple spatulas underneath to lift it out. Lift that right out. And to garnish our turkey platter today, I'm going to be using some rosemary, these little tiny baby apples. And then because it's a lemon turkey, you gotta have lots of lemon, a little bit of uh, pomegranate, and some cranberries. Now let's make some pan drippings gravy. The first thing I'm going to do is scoop out all the aromatics that we used for the bottom of the pan. I'm just gonna put them through um, a fine mesh strainer. And we're going to discard everything, but you wanna make sure you get that juice off of them before you discard them. And then carefully grab the roasting pan and strain the broth through a cheesecloth. We'll need at least three cups of broth, so if you don't have enough after straining the pan drippings, you can just add more to your measuring cup. Start by adding half a cup of butter into a saucepan. You wanna make sure that butter melts first before you add in half a cup of all-purpose flour. Whisk the flour and the butter together and then cook this over medium heat for about five to seven minutes. You want the flour to cook so you don't have any of that raw flour taste in your gravy.
We'll slowly start to add in that broth. You know, add it in slowly and then whisk after each addition so that you have an extra smooth, rich gravy. And once you've added in all the broth, continue to cook it over medium heat until it's nicely thickened. It could be anywhere from three to five minutes. And then once it's thickened, keep it covered with a lid so it doesn't form a film on the top. And at this point, it's also a great time to taste test the gravy and you can adjust the saltiness if you need to add a little extra salt. My pan drippings are usually pretty salty to begin with, so I typically don't add salt to my gravy. To carve the turkey, I like to start with the legs. So I'll we'll cut through the joints here. All right, time to get some of this turkey for myself. I'm going to get a little bit of the breast meat. I actually really like the turkey thigh as well. I like to do a mix of like the white meat with the dark meat. Let's pour some of that delicious gravy over the top. All I'm missing now is some mashed potatoes, a little cranberry sauce, maybe a little sweet potato casserole on the side. I'm so, so looking forward to Thanksgiving. I can't wait for the holiday. Time to dig in and enjoy. Got lots of that delicious gravy on my turkey. Oh, this looks so good. And this turkey smells incredible when it's in the oven too. Mmm, mm-hmm, mmm. I'm going to try a little bit of the breast meat with the gravy too. That's so incredibly juicy and tender. Mmm, mm-hmm, mmm. I just love how incredibly tender and juicy this turkey is. And then you have all those incredible flavors from the lemon and herb spread. That lemon combines so well with the dried basil, the thyme, that garlic and onion. It is such a great combination for a turkey recipe for the holiday season. You are in for a real treat with this one. And then the gravy, oh my goodness, so incredibly delicious. I love all the flavors that we got from all the aromatics, the oranges, the apples, the onions and garlic, they cook into that broth. And then when you make a gravy with it, it's just mind blowing. So incredibly delicious. Oh, and my turkey fell off. Mmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can also pair this turkey recipe with my apple cider turkey brine. It's going to add even more incredible flavor to that turkey meat. This is such a great way to prepare a turkey for the holidays. Plus it cuts down on the roasting time and you get a super juicy turkey every single time. Head on down into the video description box for the apple cider brine recipe, the link for this uh, recipe up on my website. I hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite times of the year. It's just filled with so many great memories and lots and lots of incredible food. Thank you so much for watching my latest episode and I'll see you next time with a new recipe.